Can't wait for that Buster Rhymes still book next Dude, year. And I want that picture of him like. Oh, so excited. Yeah, you know it's good. I can't. <laughs> if Paramount has any sense, they'll put him on that steel book somewhere. They'll put him. Oh, he'll be on it. Halloween Resurrection. Dude, look at that font right there for the title credits. That that oh, is okay. literally. I've back in that time, I saw that font everywhere. Every wrestling video game had that font. Everything like that font is synonymous with that time frame. People be like, "What the fuck does it mean?" I'm like, "He defines it." In the beginning of the goddamn movie, the definition is on the fucking screen. Yeah, it's on the fucking like, screen. It doesn't make sense. What does it like, mean? Can, can you fucking read? He defines it. He fucking defines it. If you don't like Halloween Five, you're fucking wrong. Basically, so <laughs> hell yes for the uh, absolutely generic font for the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. I think that's the same font they use for the Friday. Dude, it is the, the, the <laughs> well and. The Blu-ray fonts from the original and this one are like almost identical. To get genuinely aggravated by a film, I feel alive. I felt alive after seeing this thing because I was so fucking mad and so aggravated. The Thank sec- God the dislike button doesn't exist. <laughs> I know, I know. When I, watch men, when, I watch men, when 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 I watch men. Christian didn't preview that. Christian, what'd you think? It was funny. It was really funny. It's funny how it's also funny how my camera angle and everything, every episode was different. It's like I can't ever make up my mind. That's the I it's just like wow. Uh yeah. Some classic moments for sure. I think my yes. favorite was the um and I still feel this way, the with with Rob's Halloween too, everybody's like, I don't understand the white horse thing. He literally defines it. Literally, <laughs> like it's not a joke. He puts the definition in the beginning of the movie. That's the funniest thing to me. What does it mean? Yeah. He defines it. <laughs> he fucking defines it. Oh man. You know the funniest thing is I didn't have any of those saved on my phone except for the when I watch men. And shout out to Baldy Jack for right. making that. Because okay. I was hoping when we did that video, like, was anybody paying attention to my reaction? Because every time Christian said that, I'd look at the camera and go, oh, and like, he paid attention to it and he made that clip. So shout out. But the funny thing is when I'm going back and I'm like, all right, I need to find some video clips, some some highlights from over the years. It's literally so easy. Like, it's so easy. You can go a minute into any episode and one of us starts saying some dumb shit. Like, it's so it's great. Um, but also, Mark, yeah, the person that was the funny thing about the font stuff is the two font clips I used in there. Christian was the one talking about font, but he was you doing it to make fun of me. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I had fun with that. That was one. good. That was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was really good. <clears throat> well, we're here, guys. We're here. It's uh, is it, is it Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Uh. Yesterday was Valentine's Day. Uh, was also Sydney's birthday. Um, so Christian, how'd y'all spend that? What'd you guys do? Uh, she, we both went to work, and Sydney went. She ended up going to get lunch with all her friends at work, and she she had texted me probably at about five thirty when I was still at work, and she was like, "Hey, I'm really full, so if you want to just do something for yourself for dinner, like that's fine. You pick yourself up something for dinner." So I did that. I got uh. I got Raisin Cane's, which is like my kind of like my go to spot here. And then I came home and we just I ate dinner. Then we had some cake. And then literally she gave me some batteries for Valentine's Day, which I really needed. And I gave her her presents. And then, dude, we went to bed. We went to bed at 9 15, went straight to bed. That, that's yeah. what we do now. We just, we just, I don't know. Did you work 12 hours when I get home, man? I'm I'm done. So, 
Uh, and then I woke up, but I wake up so early. I didn't have work today, but I get up at like 4.55 a.m. And I just, I just, I wake up and I can't, because when I wake up, I can't sit there in the bed. I can't relax. Like I got to just get up. I got to get started. So this has been a very long day for me, but it's kind of a life hack of people. If you wake up early and there's stuff you got to do, and if you can knock it out before like the world wakes up, it's like you, your, your day is free to kind of do other stuff you need to do. So um, I used to hate getting up early, but now I love it. I really do. I can knock shit out and get rolling and then do stuff throughout the day that I want to do, like watch stuff or catch up on stuff. That's why I love staying up late. I like the whole um I, I like the whole like the world is asleep the world's quieter late at night so like i'm like yeah i'm gonna be awake i'm gonna get stuff done that's when i like record youtube stuff edit youtube stuff that's why like if you guys are a patron you'll see me drop patreon stuff at like midnight 1 a.m and like most of you are probably asleep but i'm not that's that's when i'm getting stuff done so uh but <clears throat> hell yeah i mean sounds very adult um, but I mean, as long as you I guys, mean, it is. It, I mean, shit, yeah. yeah. I want to let everybody in the chat know. Uh, hey, what's up, Justin? Ryan, nineteen eighty eight in chat. Um, I want to let everybody know that uh, th this is we talked about this in the last episode. We are going to try to do this once a month, a Q and A bullshit hour episode live with you guys because since we obviously uh, went back a little bit on the content that we put out for the podcast. We thought it'd be nice to do this, try to do this once a month so we could interact with you guys more directly. Uh, this is not going to go past 10 p.m. Eastern, give or take a few minutes here or there. Um, but it's really, and there's no topic. It's just like free flowing. We want you guys to ask questions. We kind of want to recap, um, you know, pre the previous episode. And again, it's not, it's not a guarantee that we're going to be able to do this every month. Uh, it's really just dependent on schedules and, and whatnot, feeling it out. So well, we're going to do our best to uh, make that a thing. Um, yep. Yeah. What he's basically saying is if I can make the time and that's just, that, that's just really it, <laughs> but I'm going to try guys. I'm going to try, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're here's hoping for that. Um, but yeah, man, it's uh, my Valentine's Day was great. I slept like all night, um, like got home from work, watched a Dream Master, fell asleep, woke up at like nine, fell back asleep. Um, yeah, yeah, woke up at like midnight. I was up till like two, went back to sleep. I have always not been a fan of Valentine's Day. I don't know, just never liked it. Um, so yeah, kind of. Not exciting day for me either, but Christian, I mean, right out the gate. Um, <clears throat> how'd you feel about, we talked about this a little bit on social media and you and I amongst each other, and I kind of want to get your feel for it now with the audience. How'd you feel about last episode when it comes to like switching it up, being a little more like, obviously we got a little more introspective, kind of talked about some more personal stuff. A lot of people seem to really like it. Your dad, your dad, like the uh, Instagram photo, your dad. That's crazy. What's your dad's name? Tommy. Yeah. Tommy Hanna. Like mm -hmm. the, I was like, is this Christian's dad? And I clicked on, it, I was like, that's definitely Christian's dad. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I don't, what'd you, I mean, what'd you think about it? Like, I know you said that you like to do that every now and then, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, to me, to me, I don't, to me, I think people eventually start watching podcasts and listening to podcasts to be a fly in the wall or to hear a conversation and the more actually real it can be i i think it's not only better for the show but it's better for the listeners because if they want production or they want scripted whatever they can go watch it on tv um but they they go to a podcast or they go to a show to hear something real and um, all the, that kind of all that kind of stuff is just genuine of what I think about when it comes to, you know, aging and what's out there and the questions I have about life and stuff. That's that's I think about it all the time. I don't, probably don't want to get started on it tonight because, you know, I'll, I'll get back into a, a swing of that. But um, no, that's 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 what I'm all about. That's what I do, man. So I, I to me, that was I, that was great. I loved it. 
yeah i had a i had a good time with it too i, I like when people see a side of us that's not um yeah i mean i would say that we're always authentic like I see, don't this think is I'm... why this is why people will say is christian okay because you look at clips that you make of me from a few years ago guess what guys i'm getting older okay <laughs> i'm not always going to be screaming at the camera I'm actually okay, a really in fairness, Christian. Some of those clips were less than six months ago. So yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's true. The reality is in real, like I, I'm really like my real self. I'm very, very chill. I can get animated and have fun. Don't get me wrong, but I'm pretty low. What 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 it was where I'm lo, I'm not high driven. I'm pretty I'm pretty dude. Where's my car? Yeah, you're low the majority key. of the you time. Know. Yeah, I'm low key. That's just how I am. Yeah. You know, yeah, well, in he's not wrong, guys. Uh, having hung out with Christian in person as well, there are times where it's like he's just the dude you see on the internet where he's just kind of like chilling, and then there's times where he's you know flashing his ass cheeks to yeah. everyone in the hotel room, like it just you know, but I feel like that's a guy thing too, you know, like I feel like that's just us, like there's certain things about guys that are it's like it's always that are it's always going to be funny, like butts farts like i don't know like some of you you, you don't want to see me and christians like text conversations like that's for sure because there's there's some surprises in there every now and then you know just some some dude stuff i was going back earlier to look for uh a picture of something and i saw pictures of things that i didn't want to see um so yeah um i have no idea what he's talking about you know zero clue. uh so pp dangler hell yeah uh wants to know how many titles you have in your collection approximately if you had to guess or do you actually know uh pr how many titles in my collection just horror probably five or six thousand uh to all together probably like ten thousand like every format it's it's an insane number i probably don't want to know it's a lot thousands thousands upon thousands yeah i'm not really like there guys I'm nowhere near there, guys. I Believe me, say, I'm not bragging. No, I know. I mean, I think it's cool, and a lot of people watching think it's cool. Um, I'm probably closer when it's all said and done, like to everything. It's probably like 2,000, and that's like every genre. That's even shit from like my childhood. Uh, there's the two main bookshelves I have in my family room that are full of movies. Um, that's not all my movies. I in my entertainment center, there's like multiple stacks of like DVDs and VHSs. Like I got like the fucking right. Lion King and shit. Um, you know, stuff throughout over the years for when I was a kid, and then hopefully my kid will end up liking it too. Um so yeah, yeah. Um Mark says your reactions to when Brandon plays Dream Master's look where he did is my favorite. Yeah, dude. That was that was nuts. That was nuts. You remember that? Christian? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just that was nuts. good. I, um, yeah, I went back and watched Dream Child again tonight. I hadn't watched Dream Child in probably about a year or so. And, uh, dude, I got to tell you, it, it's just the ending. Like the the final act goes off the rails, and I know why. Like I know it was rushed, and, and you know, they, they didn't really have like a solid idea how they were going to end the movie. But, like, the first hour of that movie is, like, really good shit. Like, really good shit. And Lisa Wilcox, although I think Dream Master is better, she's far better than Dream Child. Her acting is far better. Um, yeah, I just, I really, you, I, I've always, I really dig the movie till the final act. And then I'm just like, there's some cool shit in the final act. But then you just got Jacob and you got, there's just a lot. That I'm just like, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, would you say that's fair? Like, I know you love Dream Child, but would you say that's fair? Like, the first two acts, really fucking good stuff. And then it's just kind of, eh. Of course. Yeah, I don't I don't know that I've, I would, I've ever, I would ever, I don't know that I've ever expressed differently just besides the fact that I, I love the movie. But no, I don't, I don't try to, uh, I don't try to make people believe it's something that's not. I can be a lot more simple. Lisa looks so much better as a blonde. So yes. that's why the dream child's better. She's so cute as a, yeah. she's so pretty as a blonde. I love her. Yeah. But why? I mean, I don't know. We could go on a tangent about that, but I'm just going to say guys, I don't know why she was sticking her hand in the poop water. Cause that that's poop water. Like yeah. that is 100% poop water. 
Um, <clears throat> but yeah, everybody in the chat, what's up, Dave Vanderhoff, Quentin, Jaden? Hey, Dave. Hell yeah, you, Jaden, you don't like Dream Master? You suck. That's see, I feel like I'm one of the only people who doesn't care about Dream Master, dude. Come, come check my DMs. Yeah. You're not. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, because people have, for some reason, they have no issue messaging me out of the blue to tell me movies that they don't like that I do. Like, I like, OK, <laughs> I'm telling you. So, no, you're not the only one. Yeah, Believe it's me. crazy. I made a tw I made a tweet earlier today um, and I, it was about Nightmare 2. And I was just like, you know, Dream Warriors is not the best Nightmare movie. Obviously, my opinion, guys, like, obviously. And um, dude. You get some people were mad, like that's you know that's ridiculous. Dream Master is by far and away the best, or Dream Warriors is by far and away the best one. One guy said, "Nightmare Two is one of the worst films I've ever seen in my life," and I was like, "I, I don't know what to say, man." Like I, I don't know. I just I don't get why people hate it so much, man. I really don't. I really don't. But you, you know. can't try and figure it out. But I, I, I will take Dream Master over Dream Warriors. Yes, I did say that. And I mean it. I, I like Dream Master better. I think Christian's there, too, or he's almost there. It's, it's tough. You know, it's, it, it's, it depends on the day. But I love, I love 4. You know, 4 is a... 4 is... 4 is... Uh, it's like... It's like a new wave you know, kind of, it's like a new, it's like a fast paced new wave record with color and all this. And, and the previous one is more of like a wasp hard rock They're They're just different flavors and it's really, okay. What flavor do you prefer with me? Yeah. And there, it just depends on the day. You know, it really just depends on the day there. I can't be, I can't be uh, unbiased. I just love all of them. So, I mean, yeah, nobody wants you to be unbiased. You're the, you're the Freddy guy. So, you, you know, know, tell us, tell us how I'm, it I'm, is. I'm a Freddy guy. I'm not the yeah. Freddy guy. Yeah. Well, you know, you I know. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's probably, I would probably say two, four as my top two. Um, and then after that, it's either one or three. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, going back and rewatching them, guys, there's, there's only one that I really don't care for, and it's just it's Freddy's Dead. It's the only one I don't care for, but I understand why people like it. And we're you know we're not going to react that. We talked about that many times, but like if you have nostalgia for that movie, it makes total sense. Like Lord knows, there's some movies that I like that I have nostalgia for that people are like, the fuck is wrong with you? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, um, good shit, good shit. Okay, I want to talk. And by the way, guys, ask some questions in the chat if you got some stuff. We got 67 people in here right now. Hell yeah. uh, these always do really well on the playback. Uh, You're welcome. Yeah, I know. It's all me. Thanks. Hey, I'm almost at 5K. I'm at 4,900 now. I'm, get, I'm real close. Uh, but yeah, definitely not not 21. Uh, by the way, guys, yeah, congrats to Christian. He crossed uh, 21K the other day. Uh, uh, don't don't mention it, man. I'm I am mentioning it, and because uh, your channel has been on this uh, ascension for quite some time now, it's it's cool to see. I'm not throwing a, lot, throwing a lot of coals in that fire, brother. What I? No, I am. I'm saying I'm throwing. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm like my channel is a machine gun. If you turn is. the bell on, if you turn the bell on, you're getting a notification at least twice a day from me. Yeah, I, I know. I get <laughs> yeah. every single one, and then I get all your <laughs> Patreon ones too, where it's like early. At, like you uploaded like two or three today on Patreon. I was like, Dude, I, oh. yeah, I, I, yeah, I just that's the only way I know how to do it. Yeah, I hear you, but you know. uh, that's cool, man. That yeah, I've been um, I've been trying to work hard myself, and and uh, I feel like biggest month I ever had was last month, six hundred subs in a month. I I'd never seen that before. Uh, that's thanks to a lot of you Halloween fans, because uh, I was doing Halloween content. Now I'm on to Nightmare, and the first Nightmare one video I did was did really well too. So I'm looking forward to doing this series, and uh, yeah. So I wanted to talk to you christian because i've been getting dms about this this is your guy so i feel like you probably know about this but if not you looked at all into that movie coming out this year long legs with nick cage uh yeah i've looked into it but th 
the, I've seen the trailer and all that, but I, I don't know oh, if I'm supposed to teaser. Maybe I was going to say, I, oh, shit, I'm behind. I don't know. I, I think I, I know I've read up on it and I, yeah, I, the director I like, but I haven't, I don't, I can't comment too much on it. I mean, you'll go see it though, right? It's Nick Cage, a tour. Yeah. If it's Nicholas, I will, I will definitely see it. Speaking Absolutely. of that, Christian, uh, you were doing a Q and a on your Instagram the other day. Why didn't you answer my question? Uh, I didn't know you asked a question. I might've not seen it. If it got oh, buried I thought you under, knew, no, there's a reason why you wouldn't have answered it, Christian. It was really dumb, but I no, said, how I, many times I, does your uh, finger break through the toilet paper when you wipe or how often? I didn't see that. I, <laughs> I guess it got, it was the more people asked overnight. So yours kind of went down. So I just, I probably just didn't see it. I did not expect you to put that um, on your story. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I would have just put, if I saw it, I would have responded. I just would have put your name right under it. That way people knew you asked it. That's my new rule. If I do those and people ask questions like that, I must go put your I, name with it. I welcome it. <laughs> no shame. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Film Talk with Mikey says, in your own opinion, should we have new horror icons? I mean, yeah, but I think, we ha- I think we're, we're on our way to some, wouldn't you say, Christian? The answer to the question is, of course. Uh, of course. Because what happens is people will, if you don't, you have to have new heart. You have to at least try, but it doesn't happen overnight. It takes 10, 15 years to do stuff like that. So uh, I think we're working on that now, but some of them kind of just go away. I remember when those collector movies were coming out, I thought, oh, this is going to be something. Nobody talks about that anymore. And I don't, it's not, it's not necessarily people need to be talking about it. It didn't catch on. And that's, you know, that's life. It did not catch on. Collector came, collector went. You know, it is what it is. Um, some stuff just has to catch on. Maybe we, you could get it with this Thanksgiving character that Eli's making, but I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Art the Clown's um, trying. Art the Clown's definitely trying. Art, art yeah. I, my concern is it's not going to be as exciting this year as it was for two. And that could be the case. Uh, two is a sensation, and it was took the world by storm but now it's got ex- expectations so that could be a problem with it so i don't know if the answer is yes but i don't these things they happen organically and sometimes accidentally so mm-hmm. art has the workings of becoming one because he started as a non-factor that people s- bug the director hey we want more of that clown that's in that movie he wasn't Art wasn't a character in a film. He was a he was a small part in this anthology movie, but it, he looked so cool that he the people bugged the director. Hey, who's that clown? Who is that? Who is that? Uh, yeah, the movie's fine, but what about that clown? What about that clown? That forced him to make a movie about it. So it's got the workings to become one, but we're we're gonna see what happens. It's just yeah. you know we're gonna J- see what happens. Jaden, that's what's wrong with America these days. That you would put Megan in that sentence. That's what's wrong with America. Uh, Blu ray addict wants to know how we'd rank the psycho franchise. Um, one, two, although some days, some days I actually might like two better, not gonna lie. Um, four, three, and then it's just got it's just uh 98, right? After that, yeah. Yeah, if you that's want to probably count how that. I do it. One, two, four, three, ninety-eight. Uh, two, one, four, three. But I like I like all four of them because if you look at it, they all kind of represent an era. Um, I guess so. Besides two, because the reason, and that's what makes two so great. Two is really timeless. I mean, I mean, I don't think the first one's. It's a classic, but I don't know if you would use the word timeless. The thing about two that's so interesting is the theme of it is not really what you would have seen in the early eighties. It's very, no. it's very smart in, by basically turning the movie inside out and making Norman the good guy. Um, but what I love about three is it's it revels in the slasher genre, it just revels in it. It's it's one thousand percent a Friday the Thirteenth film. Um, there's even a couple cast members. There's a cast member from part five and, and part three. So it's very much a, a sleazy slasher film. And 
four, I'm a sucker for four. I yeah. love the I love yeah. the radio station aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love Norman in the movie. Um, I love the ET kid. I just love four to death. Olivia Hussey. So four is four is really cool. I love it. Yeah, four. And I'm Mick old. Harris directed it. And also, guys, I, I just think I know it doesn't. It doesn't go like it is in the series, but not at the same time because it's it's a it's a TV show. But Bates Motel is fantastic. Like I, I Bates Motel is probably like top ten TV shows all time for me. Like I I I own every season. Uh, I loved that show, and I was I was really happy that I started it when it premiered when it first came out, episode one, season one. I remember being excited for it, watching it, really being in you know into it. And just watching that show every year as it would come out week after week after week, like I miss when TV was like that. And I miss when we as a society were like that. Cause obviously, as you know, now everything gets dropped at once a lot of times and we binge it and it's over and done with. So I do miss those days when I was a teenager and you had the cable TV where it was just like every week. And then, you know, it was, it would be gone for a year and you're like fuck man like when's this new season coming and uh i just i loved that show i thought that show was phenomenally done and i think that the best thing that that show did was just throw everybody for a loop at the end and go you know what we're gonna do our own fucking thing i was like holy shit Mm -hmm. um yeah it was a great show did you watch all of that show christian i did i saw all of it um yeah i liked it a lot too quite frankly um it was it was one of those shows where I was really interested at first, and then, okay, who do we got coming in now? Some stepdad. Oh, he did what to the mom? Okay, that's his. That's his who? Oh, so it got kind of weird, and I was, it it got a little Days of Our Lives ish. I was kind of just sticking with it, but then after a while, the trick with those shows is even though you feel like you're kind of in a lull with it, you just get used to these people. Then you can't get away from it then you want to see what happens then you want to see what happens. but and then before you know it you're hooked on it um so yeah i i saw the whole thing top to bottom i remember knowing in season four that norma i mean this isn't a spoiler guys i mean it's a prequel to psycho um knowing that norma was gonna die i hated that so much man i've always liked vera as an actress i thought her and freddie highmore were great together in that series like i just really liked their chemistry and their dynamic and uh I just knowing that it was going to happen. I was like, this sucks, man. This sucks so bad. Um, Yeah. And and then, like I said, the final season where everything went off the rails for Norman and, and the way it ended to kind of like pull the wool over the eyes of everyone. I just, I really, really liked that. Uh, I did. Uh, Mike. So Mike asks, and I I do want to hear Christian's thoughts on this because I know he's not a fan. Thoughts on the uh, Godzilla and Kong new trailer. Mm. You answered it. Not Christian's not a fan. I'm I'm not a fan. I'm not interested in it. Uh, it's not. I just think it's. I, I'm not a fan. I don't want to be mean. I'm not going to be mean. I'm just. I'm. I'm not interested in it whatsoever. I'm not going to go see it. I'm not going to go to the theater, see it, or nothing like that. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Do you think that Godzilla minus one might be the reason why no. you're especially no, not absolutely interested? not. Absolutely not. Uh, no, the idea of it's so funny because I said, oh, this looks like a buddy cop film. What, what are they doing? This is so ridiculous. Then somebody sent us something and it was described yeah, as a but. And I'm thinking to myself, this is such a somebody yelling this idea out. And then you would expect the reaction. like <laughs> That'd be funny. OK, let's get serious. OK, let's work on this movie now. That's what it sounds like. Um, it's so. It, it's it just looks all it just looks really really stupid to me. I, I hate the idea of it. The fact that you've got these insanely legendary characters, and this is what they're doing. I I, I can't wrap my head around it. Um, I think it's we're in the twilight zone, and um, it's just sad that that this is what America wants to do with these characters is make a buddy cop movie. I, I just I it, just gonna look like a video game. I have I literally have zero interest in it. I'm going to vote with my dollar. Uh, I'm not gonna see it. I'm not trying to influence anybody else to do anything. I'm I'm just giving my opinion. So that's how I feel about it. Well that is pretty much what you yeah Christian's already said that guy so he's you know he's me, remained consistent. Uh me yeah I, I won't lie to you um it's probably the least excited I've been 
for a MonsterVerse movie since Kong Skull Island. Um, and that was just because that was still the beginning of the MonsterVerse and I wasn't a big Kong fan. So I was like, why is Kong getting his own movie? And then I saw the movie and I was like, oh, that was it's actually great. pretty damn good. Yeah. It's really good. Um, now, that's not to say that I'm not looking forward to this because because I definitely am looking forward to this. I mean, the po the new poster is my background on my phone, but that's more oh. of just, to, yeah. Well, that's more of just to, an indictment on what's happening right now theatrically. There's just nothing coming out, nothing worthwhile, at least. And it's just, we're in this really weird lull where it's like, I miss going to the movies. Like, I want to go to the movies. I, I And I haven't gone since Night Swim and, and that movie sucked. Um, so... It's just, it's kind of a bummer. Now, having said all of that, um, I, I'm looking forward to it. I, I am. I, I think that some of that is getting played up to a point where I don't think that that is how it is at all. Watching that trailer, there's lines of dialogue that say, like, Godzilla and Kong still aren't friends. There's, they have a fight in Egypt. You can see it in the trailer. And, like, there's someone that says they don't have to be, they don't have to get along. They just, they just have to work together. So, it, it if... If that ends up being the case and it's like Godzilla versus Kong where they're not buddy buddy and it's more or less like, hey, I still fucking hate you. Oh, I hate you, too. But then this big threat comes in and they're like, oh, I guess we got to kill this fucking thing. Then I'm fine with that. But, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. There's it's cool, though, because you're kind of getting I saw somebody on Reddit say this like it's it's wild to think that this is the case, Christian, because this is going to make you roll your eyes. But it was like, so wait. Basically, this movie is Kong fighting evil Kong and Godzilla fighting evil Godzilla. And it's like, yes, there's an evil ape that is supposed to be the big bad. But as we saw in this newest trailer, he's not the only big bad. There's also another lizard, Shimu, that is like an ice lizard that looks a lot like Godzilla. And so it's like Godzilla versus evil Godzilla and Kong versus evil Kong. And it's like on paper, yes. Like everybody's making jokes. Like that sounds so stupid. Um, and maybe it will be. Maybe it will be. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna see it. Um, surprisingly, I've actually heard good things from the test screenings. A lot of people have said that they actually it, it's actually good. Um, similar to what I heard from Godzilla vs Kong, and I liked Godzilla vs Kong. But I put out a tweet that, that my feelings on it are like. As long as Toho's still going and Toho is going to give us these dark, scary Godzilla movies with real depth, Legendary is going to do what Legendary is going to do. They're trying to market it as they want the monster verse to be their version of like the fucking MCU. And like, yeah, I understand I'm not, why. I'm not the I'm not the customer for that. I'm, yeah, I get it. I get it. And I'm not I'm not an MCU fan myself. I don't like comic book movies, but I'm a sucker for Godzilla. Um, why if people if if it, it's all i see is people shitting on these movies that come out um there was one that that's out right now and literally everybody is shitting on it and i'm just saying to myself then why are you people going to see it uh well why, why are you going if, and it's funny thing is everybody says the same thing oh this ain't gonna be good and that's all you see is people shit on it then why are you going stop going i know uh, Campfire Haven with a ten dollars super chat. One of my favorite podcasts. Thank you, thank you. You guys are so awesome. Did you guys see the trailer for Late Night with the Devil? Just setting alone has me hooked. I think this one's going to surprise everyone. I haven't. Christian, have you seen this trailer? Yeah, yeah. I, I I'm having a fuzzy memory. the The name when I when that popped up, I I recognize the name. Let me see. I know I'm going to recognize this as soon as I pull it up. And thank you very much, Campfire Haven, for that ten dollars super chat. I've, yes, I've oh, dude, um, yes, late night with the devil. It, it's uh, it's gonna be on Shutter, which um, I'm excited. It's got a, it's got a who's that guy? So I know his face. Um, it, it's it looks like it's gonna be like a horror version of the Joker. Uh, a live television broadcast in 1977 goes horribly wrong, unleashing evil into the nation's living room. I say it's like the Joker. It re the trailer reminded me of the scene where the Joker was uh, on the TV show. Uh, uh, David David Dest Mountain. Dave David Dest Mountain. Yep. Yeah. He's a yeah. great actor. Fucking love Dest Mountain. Um, yeah. yeah. Yes, I saw the trailer for that, and I, I am very excited. Tales from the Shelf, what's up, dude? Four ninety nine super chat. Thank you very much. Happy to have bonus. You need a. I have a theory that twenty twenty four is going to be the best year for horror in a long time. Any thoughts? The lineup is pretty stacked. 
I think that it could definitely surprise some people because we have been talking and a lot of people have been talking on the internet for the last couple months. They're like, Oh God, 2024 looks so bleak. I really think that's just like the beginning of 2024. I don't know about you, Christian, but I definitely think that as the year goes on, there's a lot to look forward to. I just think right now it kind of sucks. Well, what I don't want to sound like the pessimistic guy, but tell me, what are we looking uh, we forward got Nosfer- to? Nosferatu. Uh, okay. Robert Eggers, that one looks good. Um, we've got uh, Saw 11. I'm very excited for that. I know Christian's probably middle this of year? on that one. Yeah, that it comes out in October. Yeah. Um, you know, I, 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 I won't judge it before I see it. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I can't say I'm exactly thrilled about making Maxine. Yes, prequels. Maxine. Maxine, yes. I am excited about I'm very excited about that. Uh, that's the one movie where I'm like, okay, that's going to – there's no way that's going to miss. Uh, that's they, no, Yeah, there's no way that's going to miss is Maxine. I read from someone that's uh, – like from the test screenings, they say the movie opens with ZZ Top, and I was like, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. That's just going to take me right into it. Uh, it's apparently a – really gory drug and infused movie and i'm just like dude i can't wait like i literally can't wait not a big zz top fan but you know can't judge it off of that can't remember what song they said it was that is playing when it starts what's easy top song it was um but uh yeah i mean i look i am more hopeful for the back half of this year man i will say that i will i definitely am more hopeful and thank you for the super chat and to you asking guys yes uh, I I have seen Monarch. Uh, Christian hasn't seen Monarch, though. I did tell him if he wants to watch Monarch, I he can use my Apple TV because there's no point in paying for it yourself, and that's literally the only reason I got it. And I liked Mon. I liked Monarch. Um, uh, and then there was a, what else? What there was another thing that I was going to address before we went. Alien Romulus. Yeah, I'm excited. Alien for that. Romulus. Yep. Uh, yes, Deadpool and Wolverine. I actually am really excited for I, I fuck i mean i'm not a comic book fan but i love the deadpool movies i, I love them i Have won't you seen see the either one. Movies? it's i that's just yes i saw it i it's not for me i'm not into those whatsoever uh i i, I kind of wish i was so i could be part of the party but i get i just get zero enjoyment out of that jaden's got a list right here long legs quiet place day one maxine terrifier three the Wolfman remake, The Strangers Chapter One, that's true. Saw so Eleven, Your Monster, uh, Cuckoo. Quiet Place Day One has my attention because I would like to see how all that started. Um, my only issue with uh, with uh, my only issue with uh, with Jim Halpert as a director because I can't remember his name, <laughs> John Krasinski, <laughs> is I feel be- he's talked about. He's not really a big horror fan. I, I feel like he's scared to cross those those lines with his movies and be like, Oh shit, he's going there. I like the first one. Okay. Uh, second one was all right. Yeah, they're both PG 13, aren't they? I, they may be. Um, yeah. But I, I, I'm excited. I, I'm interested. I shouldn't say excited. I'm interested in seeing what he's doing with this day one. Cause that, that I, I I'm, I'm just interested to see how that all started. So that has my attention too. Uh, Mark, I can tell you Christian's excited for it. Always diehard Ghostbusters fan. I just I, I can't I, I can't have an ending like the like the last one. Can't they can't I still haven't it. seen Afterlife. Hmm. Is it good? Uh I liked it. Yeah. Okay. It's it's, it's got it, I like it. They mix they mix old people with young people and uh what's his face? Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd was good. Yeah, yeah. He made he made the right choice being in that. Tommy Doyle. Yeah. yeah Tommy Doyle. He was great. He was great. Uh, PP Dangler again. Serious question: Nine Inch Nails or Tool? Tool for me. Neither. Not a fan of either one of those bands. Yeah, I'm not. I would. I, I'm not. I don't like Nine Inch Nails. I maybe like two songs. I know more Tool, so I just say Tool. Yeah. I don't like to think when I'm listening to music. I, I quite frankly, I hate Tool, uh, and I uh, I don't like grunge music. So. There you go. There you go. Being, I'm just being dead ass honest. Hey, uh, Christian, Bradley wants to know, did you see the uh, Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2 trailer? Yeah, I'm actually very excited. They got a million dollars this time. So uh, me and Sydney loved Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey. And I'm so excited to see this one. 
So yes, I'm I'm actually excited for Winnie the Winnie the Pooh two. Blood and more honey, whatever the hell it's called. The trail that the trailer, the poster for it is insane. It looks like it looks like a like God of War on the front, like all these giant gory versions of the characters. Um, I love it. Yeah, I I never saw the first one. Um, oh, I don't know. I mean, I might see it. I, I might see it. I mean, I, if I, I I hope that. From what I've heard, I I hope the second one is at least better, because if it is, it'll give me a reason. Like that's literally what happened with Terrifier. I hadn't seen Terrifier, and Terrifier Two was about to come out, and I was like, "Fuck it, I'll just watch it," because everybody's hyping up Terrifier Two, like it's gonna be this big deal. And I thought Terrifier was fine. Like I didn't love it, didn't hate it. I just thought it was fine. Uh, and then Terrifier Two was just freaking insane. I mean, I, I like Terrifier. I, I still go back to that one and have a great time with it. I, I still think if you watch the, I think that one's still just as aggressive as two, just not as often. But the way he kills that one girl hanging her like a deer is. Oh, dude. 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 I, I think the opening scene at the pizzeria is hysterical. I, I like, I like Terrifier. And, yeah, and I, I, think it, I, I think it, I think it's fine. I just think that I, 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 some of the criticism I feel, it's just like they're describing movies from the 80s but because terrifier is not old it can't it can't get the pass from because it's exactly it's 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 i i just like it i, I like it i think that the lead girl was really cute too i liked her a lot she was she, yeah the, the only thing the funny thing is terrifier i walked away from it like i wanted more there like i wanted to know more about these characters i wanted it to be a little bit longer i wanted it to just be a little bit bigger i guess but i had to understand like it was super small you know low budget and then the second one i was like oh but it was too long so it's like i think damian leone said terrifier 3 is going to be like an hour 45 hour 50 i think that's perfect like that's perfect you don't need to do 220 230 and you also don't you shouldn't do like 80 minutes like i feel like that's the perfect range he's meeting like right in the middle there i'm excited but i do agree with Christian, I, I really do that. Um, I think that there's no way three lives up to two just in the hype machine alone, because two took everybody by storm. Like you couldn't believe a movie like that was in theaters. Mm -hmm. Like you, you just, it was insane. And now everybody's seen it. So what's three going to do that, you know, that's really going to shock people. I, I hope the shock factor isn't the fact that it's just going to be on Christmas. Yeah. That could be just the whole, I, I don't know. Prove, prove me wrong, you know. No, I hear you. Mark wants to know, how do you like your uh, your wings? I'm a barbecue guy. That's a good question. I like a dry rub. Um, I'm really big into lemon pepper. Lemon pepper is usually my, my way and dry. I don't really like saucy wings. Just give me a nice dry rub. And I don't prefer the drumstick wings. Give me the flat wings. Yep. That's how I prefer mine. Flats are the easiest. There's less chance you're going to get a tendon. There's less chance you're going to get a bunch of fatty spots. Um, yeah, yeah, give me that. Um, I, I have not seen Robert Englund, Hollywood Dreams and uh, Nightmares, I think. Christian, I'm sure you've seen it. Yeah, I got a review for the documentary I got, when the Steelbook Blu-ray came out. I did a video on that, Raymond. It was sometime last year. Pretty much right when it came up. I, I loved it. I learned a lot. I don't want to spoil it. I, I learned so much stuff about Robert. I, I really don't want to spoil it because it'll be surprising for people. So um, go check it out if you haven't seen it. It's, it's sensational. It's 5% of it's Elm Street. Hell yeah. 92 people right now, guys. Make sure you're hitting the like button, please. Uh, Christian, anything that's been percolating in your mind recently? Anything that you know you you, you noticed or any... Any uh, acts you have to grind? Um, not really. Um, I get annoyed when people say I'm really big into energy stuff like that. That annoys the shit out of me. That's just weird. But nothing movie wise. You ever hear somebody just say like I'm really big on I'm really big into energy and like the flow. Like you know I hate when people say stupid shit like that. Well, like people's nothing movie wise. Energy? Yeah, when people just say shit like like that. Like I believe in energy uh, and stuff like that. I hate that. I mean, um, that sounds like horoscope shit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I that's my pet peeve. Movie wise, not really. Um, 
I don't know. I've been I've been going through my collection lately and trying to find stuff that uh, I either hadn't seen in a long time or hadn't watched before. Uh, let's see. Um, I watched this movie the other day. I really liked it. Well, I say the other day. I I I saw it when I first got it, but I I fell asleep on it. This movie called Victor Frankenstein with Daniel Radcliffe yeah. and James mm-hmm. McAvoy. Really liked that. Um, uh, I think. Oh, this right here. I did a YouTube short on this dark web unfriended yes. too. Yeah. I really like that. Very different from the first one, but still really good. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I love this movie. The house is October built. Uh, if you, uh, my YouTube shorts, I've been having so much fun talking about that kind of stuff. Dude, that's so funny. I gotta, I gotta grab something that's literally in my closet right here. Diary uh, of the dead. Y'all. George Romero. So two years ago for Christmas, my mom, I guess, saw this somewhere. She bought me this, Christian. I still haven't opened it. <clears throat> um, you oh, should, it's 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 not great, but um, you should still see it to get the story between the two. But the first one's really good. Uh, first one's really good. But I, I can't. Say, I don't want to say anything about it. It's just a. It's just like so. Like my mom, because like then she she also got me this. Hellraiser on DVD, like I didn't have it already. And nice. I was like, thanks, mom. Like, shout out. Uh, Alexis sent me the Arrow Blu ray of that and Hellbound like a year and a half ago. And uh, so, yeah, um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, okay. So, really, I wanted to say to your point when you're talking about people talking about energy, and I was like, dude, that sounds like horoscope shit. You know, one of my employees said to me the other day, she was like, you know, if you think about it, uh horoscopes are basically just like space racism and i was like dude you're right like you're like judging people and stereotyping people off of like when they're what? born astrology yeah. like when they're born yeah oh you were born around this time so this means that you must be this and your personality must be like this and you fucking like Aries. segregate people yeah you're like I can't, oh, I'm a Libra. I can't be with a Sagittarius or whatever. And I'm like, I never thought about that, but that is so true. It is space racism. Like, If I can, um, the den is great, Keith. The issue is I can't find a physical media copy of it. I don't know if it has one, but yes, I love the den. That girl was really cute. And there was that some crazy shit in that movie, Keith. I, I don't want to say anything if people hadn't seen it, but yes, I love that movie. I just can't find a copy of it. Am I going to go to Amity Afflictions tour? Uh, I was actually talking to my buddies about that the other day. A couple of the bands that we used to see years ago on the Warped Tour circuit are going on tour this year. Uh, I know I'm going to Creed in August, uh, which obviously that wasn't a Warped Tour thing, but fucking pumped for that. I'm going to get hammered. Um, I, there's a band that I used to, well, I still love them. Uh, I see stars. I used to see them years ago on the warp tour circuit. They're going on tour. We're trying to go see them. And then empty affliction. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I'm definitely going to try. I just don't know if, uh, as I get older, like, I don't know, man, I used to do like walls of death, like the wall of death where there's crowds would separate and you just run into each other when the music dropped and, you know, circle pits and all that. I don't know <laughs> how my body would handle that i mean oh you're too kidding. you're too skinny you'd get fucking killed you kidding me i was doing it at 18 bro hey, uh, i'm sure you got well you listen to you now you said i don't think i can do it anymore i just well i just mean because in the moment you don't feel it you don't feel all the fists hitting don't you do it this. you're just going and then don't do it the next morning you're like god damn like <laughs> i feel like shit yeah. um so yeah i don't know uh do we believe in psychics christian do you believe in psychics um, you know, it's, it, I, I believe, I believe that there are things that I can't explain or understand. Um, I don't like to rule out the possibility that there are people on this earth that can do things that are unexplainable. Uh, but in a general sense, I would say no, but, um, I, I, I am sure that there has been people that have had somebody walk up to them and say something to them about them that there's no way they could know. Or that sort of thing, but I don't know. Gut answer is no, but I, I kind of leave a little bit of room to let my, let myself to at least hear out the idea of anything. So ninety nine, I'd say ninety percent no. And a long winded answer. 
Yes, I was. I was in the pits. Okay. I was, man. I got kicked in the face so many times. I mean, you name it. It was sick. I saw one year at a uh, Sleeping With Siren show, I saw some dude get kicked in the face and it just busted his nose and like blood was pouring down his face. And like they picked, like, like they helped him up, like security or whatever. They fucking took him up on the stage and he got to watch the rest of the set backstage like on the back of the stage i was like that's my pet peeve i hate i hate people that do shit like that yeah like will you get special treatment now because you got kicked in the face you chose to go in the pit motherfucker i don't know uh let's see you guys gonna see rob zombie on tour this year one i'm sure it's probably hella expensive uh no, i've never absolutely seen absolutely not absolutely not rob and alice are going on tour again this year and they always give good ticket prices always you can go see rob and alice very cheap i was gonna uh, say I'm, you've seen rob a couple times right i have i have i've seen both of them a couple of times and it's an it's so fun it's so fun um manson looks like he's starting to creep his head back out in the public Look like he lost some weight. Um, I don't know if he's going to go back on tour. I've had a, I had a horrible experience with Manson. I still want my money back, quite frankly. Um, but Rob and Alice were great. Uh, you'll never see a better show than Alice, but so fun. And their tickets are always cheap. They play good. Sh- they play good venues. You know, some of their shows are still first come first serve tickets too. So nice. Yeah, go, if uh, you guys if you guys can see the gruesome twosome. Go see him, Alice and Rob. It's so fun. Absolutely, I see, so fun. I might see Rob this year. I really might. I mean, and if he's touring with Alice, that's awesome because I've never seen either one. So that'd be really cool. Um, tickets aren't too crazy. Yeah, I mean, I have a couple concerts that I want to do this summer for sure. Um, it, it, I saw somebody ask a couple minutes ago. It, nobody came up with Unita. It was, it was, it's from. Uh, Return of the Living Dead. You need a medical supply, that and that's Christian's favorite horror movie. So like mm-hmm. that is that was the impetus for you need it. So like right. I, I saw that someone said, oh, I saw Trick or Treat Studios. Yeah, that's because of Return of the Living Dead. Like it's we don't own that. That's why Christian keeps getting hit with shit when he tries to sell shirts because of yeah, the I, logo. I don't. I don't. It, the thing is, I don't really remember what the copyright was from though. I don't know if it's from if it's from Lionsgate or what. But yeah, I got it, I got hit with it. I, I didn't think I ever would, but I did. Somebody I, owns. Somebody owns it. I know that. Yeah, they don't want us making money off of it. Yeah. Um. Sam, I don't know when the album is coming. I know it's this year. That's what Andrew told me, the the keyboard player and produce like he also does sound design for the band and stuff. He's uh Devin's younger brother. Uh I, I know it's this year. I'm assuming if they're going on tour this summer, which they are, an announcement's gotta be happening soon because they're gonna be mm-hmm. touring that new album. That's that's just how bands do it. Um but what I want to see personally is, I mean, Creed's going on this tour. Can we get at least, like, let's just get a new single. You know what I mean? Like, would you be cool with that, Christian? Like, may, I'd love a thousand album. percent. You got to imagine that they're working on an album. Yeah. You know, now they don't need to. I mean, nowadays, the interesting th- thing about a lot of, uh, I guess what you call um, legends acts, bands that have, you know, bands that have been around for a while from previous eras putting out a new album for most of them um is pointless it just is um because nobody's going to listen to it anymore it's just that's just the way it is it's sad i'm I'm old school i'm an album guy i like to listen to albums uh but there are it's strange enough there are a few bands that still can move the needle in dead formats like cds and stuff and it's not really a dead format but my point is if creed put out an, a, a cd or an album it would still sell i mean yeah. i'm not a giant metallica fan but the fact of the matter is somehow they I, th- I think not the yellow album but the one before it it still went gold like selling cds that's insane i mean think about that i'm sure taylor swift still goes platinum Hardwired, but uh, yeah. but yeah, hard. I mean, hardwired went gold in the U.S. That's that's five hundred thousand copies sold physical. That's insane. Uh, Creed would go platinum in twenty twenty four. I I I almost guarantee it. If they put out a record, it would go platinum. In the, uh, the, which would be dude, insane. 
the craziest thing, dude, is that Creed was they're literally they're part of they're probably the top of that butt rock, as the kids would say, era. And like they got so memed that it brought them back to life. Like it it literally when they made an announcement that they were just doing that cruise, it went viral. Everybody was like, holy shit, Creed's back. And then when they were like, no, it's just like a show on a cruise ship, so many people were mad. And I actually yeah. read an article um, where like Stapp had talked about that. He was basically, they didn't expect that. I thought that was super cool to hear Scott talk about that. Like, that's that, that's interesting. Expect- yeah. But that's so interesting to me how they didn't expect it because to me, Creed has never gone away in no, terms yeah. of popularity. So to me, it's like, I don't know, I guess, cause if you're a fan, you got your nose to the ground on that kind of stuff. To, and maybe with Scott, he didn't realize it because his solo oh, cool. stuff was modest. Although I loved the stuff Scott was doing the last five or six years, but no, to me, it's just like Creed's never gone away. So of course people were going to be freaking out. Yeah. I mean, you wrote uh, the song cause you got millennials are at the age now where, you know, that's the sound of our childhood it means everything to us. When we hear the, when we hear higher or we hear whatever it play, we, we, we think about a time and a place. And once you get that connection with, with people, you got them for life. Yep. So to me, it's like, of course you're going to have millions of people freak out, but yeah, um, I'm just glad, I'm glad Scott's healthy because he was, he had, he kept fucking up a lot. I'm just glad he's healthy. I'm glad he looks good. Guys, go listen to Scott Stapp's interview on Theo Vaughn's show, and you'll really get a sense of what he went through. So it, it was incredible listen. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say Hardwired is uh, is actually platinum in the U.S. Uh, oh, and, that doesn't surprise me. And then um, what was it? Uh, their last one, 72 seasons, sold 150,000 copies in its first week. Um yeah, Metallica is still one of those bands. Like you said, it doesn't really make sense. I think it's just because Metallica's fans are people like our age and older. So like, it's not really weird for us to go buy a CD because we're the last generation that still did that. It well, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, the interesting thing is today, I wouldn't be surprised if close to 50%, if not more of it, is vinyl over CD. Yeah, yeah. I really wouldn't. I really would not be surprised about that. I mean, I mean, I feel like that's another thing with like people that it's like a thing in the horror community. We all love vinyl records. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, it's just like it's you know? synonymous. It's like with horror collecting, it, people love with and with horror. It, it's such a I don't know. It just I, I really can't explain it either. But horror fans love tangible stuff, stuff that connects to the movies, whether it be vinyls or movies or props and toys and fucking magazines which i have a hump team of those mm-hmm. you know hell yeah uh thank you for the two dollar super chat yes we remember fat pinhead believe me we remember fat pinhead uh, <laughs> oh man dude i almost i was i was at work when i was compiling that new intro i was gonna go back to that uh after dark where we like danced and shit and put that in there but I, I was my phone i actually it started dying and i didn't have my charger with me i was like fuck no i can't like i just that was don't worry. Shit. I, that, that episode was insane yeah. insane I, it wasn't even after dark that was an episode and then christian i don't know what he was on that night but like as soon as we ended the recording he's like guys i'm just gonna hit go live again <laughs> We're just gonna like dance to this music. Oh my god, I did do that. I forgot yeah. about that. You're like, I'm not gonna say anything. No one say anything. We'll go for like five minutes and then we'll just end it. And we were like, all right, fuck it, let's do it. That's funny. And, I did do that. Yeah. And that and, that became a that became a private thing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I completely forgot about that. It, it, memes came. I like dancing. There's somebody that comes in the chat every now and then. I'm pretty sure it's Jaden dancing. Nick. Like that. That I, I don't. He. I think I asked him, but I, he said no. But he could be lying. Uh, he's lying because I know he's fat pinhead. Because I, I, I was like, I know you're fat pinhead. He's like, what? <laughs> oh, my goodness, you fucking are. Oh uh, man. Well, shit. All right, guys, we hit the hour mark. Uh, I, thank you. I can. Hey, I can go another fifteen. 
We, okay. we can hang out All for right. a little bit Ooh, longer. Cool. We'll go another 15. Uh, Christian does have to work early as shit tomorrow, and I got to work 12 hours tomorrow myself. Yeah. So we ain't going to go longer than that. But come on, send us some questions, guys. This is fun. I like shooting the shit with you guys. Uh, while people are getting some questions, Christian, I got to ask you something. Yes, sir. I know you're not the biggest fan, but I see somebody talking about it. I feel like you've said that a lot tonight. I know you're not excited about this, Christian, but... A a lot of people are talking about it in the chat. Um, What are your thoughts on the Black Album? Do you agree that that's when Metallica kind of sold out? Or do you agree that that out... Like, I don't know. I'm just curious. My thoughts are, it's one of the biggest selling albums in the world. So, obviously, it's, uh, it's, it's an important record. Uh... I don't find myself listening to much Metallica. Um, to be honest with you, I don't like Lars. I think he's a shitty drummer. Um, and he's an asshole. So there's that. I, I just, I'm not a big fan of Metallica. Uh, I don't, I feel like they've kind of taken a Avenged Sevenfold's place too. Like I felt like for a while, Avenged Sevenfold, I couldn't get away from it. Their fans all dressed and looked the same. And I was just like, oh, Jesus Christ. If you, like, if you went to back in 2008, you could smell an Avenged Sevenfold fan a mile away. They wore <laughs> bu- buckle jeans. Uh, it, now I feel like Metallica has become like the new Avenged Sevenfold in a weird way. But I kind of wish Avenged Sevenfold would come back. I don't know where those guys went. No, what am I? What do I think of last year? But it just wasn't good. What do I think about? What do I think about uh, the Black Album? Um, I, dude, it's one of the biggest selling records of all time. Does that mean selling out uh, because they slowed down? Um, M- Megadeth did the same thing just a little later. It's the progression of the way those guys started writing songs. All that stuff sounded, all that stuff, they were writing fast stuff. Doom, 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 doom. You change as musicians. You know, you don't sound the same record to record unless you're ACDC. And that's fine too. Um, but if you, if, if, if the Megadeth fans will listen to Rust in Peace and then they listen to, uh, youth and uh, they listen to uh, the Symphony of Destruction record. I forget the name of it. Countdown to Extinction, and then they listen to Euthanasia. It's exactly the same thing that Metallica did with Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, and then the Black Album. It's the same thing. The, these two bands did the exact same thing. They slowed down and they got a little simpler, and they got more song oriented. You know, yeah, and, I, and it kind of pisses me off too because I feel like. I feel like Megadeth gets a pass from a lot of people that simply just don't like Metallica. And part of that is just stemmed from the whole Dave Mustaine situation. And while I understand that, I would say that their trajectories have been very similar. Uh, I don't think, you know. I I don't know if it's that. And for me personally, what I think it is, is metalheads don't care about, sometimes they don't care about the, the catchiness of a song. There's no doubt in my mind, uh, Dave Mustaine as a, as a guitar player, destroys both uh Cam it's him, it, yeah. it's him, yeah. it's embarrassing how much more talented Mustaine is than Kirk Hammett. I love Kirk. I'd much rather hang out with Kirk. I'd much rather be around Kirk. I'd much rather play his guitars because he has cool old school he has a Ouija guitar and stuff. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing with metalheads. If you can play better than the other one, it doesn't matter. It, it, like that's the, people get pissed off about that. And Dave is the biggest uh spearhead of all that. Dave is a very snarky grumpy old man so of course their fans the megadeth fans are going to be that way uh, i i'm i'm part of part of the anthrax tribe so um that's the simpsons of the thrash metal crew um but you know it that's the th- that's the thing about megadeth um some days i really just can't stand listening to megadeth because dave's vocal he's a shitty vocalist uh yeah. but it works for that music you know, I, I'm the biggest Motorhead fan in the world. Like, I love Motorhead. And yes, I listen to Motorhead, a lot of it, not just one song. <laughs> I love Lemmy. He's such a bluesy songwriter. I mean, if you listen to a lot of Motorhead, some of that's the same thing. Motorhead has some of the best, tastiest blues jams that are 90 beats per minute. But people know one thing from them, and they're so diverse. I don't want to get off on a tangent here, but... Um, no, I think the reason, Nick, the real reason Megadeth Mega fans get pissy about Metallica is because the spearhead of that whole thing, Dave, is a grumpy, mean man. So they're just mimicking their yeah, idol. He hate, their yeah, he hates, he hates them and, and publicly over the years. I think it's been different recently or, you know, in the last decade or so. But for a long time, Dave Mustaine was definitely on a fuck Metallica tour. 
Uh, well, he did say that um, he did say that they used a bunch of his music for the first record, and then he also says that they used a lot of it on the second record too. Well, and and like I've always said, like I agree with everything you said. He's a much better guitarist than Hetfield and Hammett combined. Hetfield's not even a great guitarist. He's he's a rhythm guitarist for a reason. Like, no, no, he, he uh, Hetfield is, is a, he's a very good guitarist. But I, I'm saying in comparison to Mustaine. Like Musta- technically speaking, Mustaine. Technically, can do- technically, but yeah, Hetfield is he's perfect. I never hear him screw up. He's no, so, yeah, and he doesn't. He he's known for not alternate picking. He down picks everything, mm-hmm. which is so insane. The muscle and his the fact that he doesn't have some sort of carpal tunnel to me is insane. Oh, dude, the guy's huge too. Like Hetfield's a big dude. Yeah. Like he's but um, I almost no, wonder if Hetfield's a like Hetfield is so clean his guitar playing like. It's to me. It's almost it's weird how Hetfield is probably the most talented guy in that band. Yeah, well, I mean, interesting yeah. enough, he's so he's great, but Mustaine is it's is alien. He's alien like talented. Yeah, and, and the whole thing with the Metallica and Megadeth thing. Well, the Dave Mustaine and Metallica thing. I have always maintained because I've always been a, more of a Metallica fan than a Megadeth fan since I was a kid, but. I just think that, look, Dave Mustaine made his bed. You, you know, you can, we can feel however we feel about it, or you can have your opinions and whatnot. But like at the time when they kicked him out of the band, they had every right to kick him out of the band. He was a, he was an unreliable alcoholic asshole. Like it's just, he was, he, I mean, that's just who he was, but it, it but I understand why people were like, well, everybody in the band at that time was on some kind of drugs or drinking or yeah, sure. But they were still showing up to, you know, uh, sound checks and shows on time and shit like that. Like they were, Dave Mustaine couldn't even do that. Um, so I get it. I mean, I get it. And also I just think personality wise, they just didn't mesh like Dave. No, and they're, they're, it's clear. Mesh. It's clear. Who's the alpha in the band. There's no room. And this is why I love J- uh, Jason Newstead so much. If, if, if some kind of monster to me is an embarrassment to watch uh, for those guys. I don't know why they did that. I cringe watching it, but Jason Newstead looks like a million bucks. He he had a side project that could not sound anything less metal in the world that James had a problem with, and he said, "You know what? Fuck you. I'm not doing this shit." And then he stood him up when they came when they went to go see his band, and and Jason. And Jason didn't even go see uh, Lars after the show. I love Jason Newstead. Did he, He's the did, man. I, he fucking I, I, left the band. It, it, oh, Fuck okay. Lars, man. I, I I hate some kind of monster. I yeah, love Jason I, Newstead. I, I, I feel bad for Hetfield every time I watch some kind of monster because the dude had just recently blown his voice out. Um, they're obviously getting forced in one direction with their music. They're They're getting forced to... They were at a really low point as a band. Like they all did not fuck with each other. Um, they, yeah, I mean, the only person in that entire movie that doesn't come across like a douchebag at any point is Kirk Hammett. No, he's he, he's lovable. Kirk, yeah, so he's lovable. just great. Um, and but even when Hetfield's being a dick, who's he being a dick to? Lars, because Lars is a fucking asshole. He's like, a weak. Yeah, he's he's annoying. I don't like. I don't like fuck. I just don't see you're making me get so pessimistic tonight. Yeah, I don't like Metallica. You know, I, 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 I shit talk Lars Ulrich. Shit talk. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't dislike Metallica. I just don't listen to them. It's not for me. I, 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 I that's fine. I, I heard all I needed to hear when you said that you respect James Hetfield. You like James Hetfield. He's the reason I like Metallica. It's James yeah. Hetfield. So, yeah, Lars can. Ah, uh, yeah, he can he can suck it. And uh, Rob Trujillo, he's a good guy, but you know, you know how it is for bassists and Metallica. <laughs> it's a revolving door. So, like, hey, Rob, you're you're a good dude, but you're, I mean, you know, the 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 last bassist they had that actually had like a lot of personality, I think, and that truly stood out was Cliff Burton. So, like, you know, and and he was genuinely like talented as fuck. Cliff see, Burton. See, was. you're getting me started again. I I disagree. I think Newstead you didn't like was. Cliff? No, I'm. I. I don't think you've given Newstead nearly enough credit. If you watch Cunning Stunts, that show, that whole record, Newstead's vocals are on point. The way he plays the bass is so great. He's a pick player, but he attacks it like Lemmy. No, Newstead was incredible. I think I, Newstead, they couldn't. I, they couldn't have had a better. Newstead. I don't want it to sound like that. I'm simply just saying that, like, I think that, um, I think that Cliff Burton was head and shoulders the best bassist Metallica has ever had. 
And I oh, know that's not debatable. Yes. Especially like if you watch Tio, he's just a really quiet dude. Like he's fine at what he does, but like he's just there. You know what I mean? He, he's just there. There's no reason for him to talk on stage. <laughs> What's yeah, he gonna say? I don't know. He's got a pretty sweet gig though. You know, after Metallica was well established. <laughs> yeah. You want to be our bassist? Yeah, but wow. yeah, but dude, he, he you realize Trujillo has a lineage. He played with Ozzy before that. He was yeah. in suicidal tendency. So it's not like he was a nobody. No. No, you know what I mean? But he got a pretty solid gig. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, and good for him. I like Rob. He's a nice guy. Um, all right, this would be our last question for the night. You Mr. can, uh, you can go. You, you, you can do a couple more. I'll tell you okay. when I gotta go. Right, okay. Nick and Christian, what's your favorite Leonard Skinner song? Christian, you go first. <sighs> um, Tuesday's gone. I guess. Simple man. Because I feel like a simple man. I'm so uh, picky with music. Like I don't, I don't listen to a whole lot of Skinner. Somebody Nick didn't ask the question, but somebody had said, "Hey, Led Zeppelin or Deep Purple." Don't get me fucking started on how much I love Deep Purple. But the thing <laughs> is, I love bands that people know one or two songs by. But you ask me about these bands, I'll tell you all about. Oh, you didn't realize David Coverdale sang for Deep Purple? Let me tell you about this record. You didn't realize mm -hmm. Glenn Hughes sang for Deep? Oh, let me tell you about this. I could go on, but nobody would know what i'm talking about and i just figured just shut up christian don't even get started but yeah i'm a massive deep purple fan my favorite guitar player is richie blackmore what's your, what's the best year of horror all time I saw, I saw this question earlier tales from the shelf he puts it in there again i saw people saying 1990 i would it's hard to argue 1990 for me personally the best year for horror yeah i know was damn good i really don't know if i could answer that I mean, what is the best year? I, it's hard to say. It, it depends on what you like, what kind of what, what genre you're into, um, or subgenre. Yeah, hard. 88 was really good too. 88 was really good. I'd probably That's go. 80, I'd probably go 85. Day of the Dead, Return of the Living Dead, Friday, uh, Friday, not Friday, Nightmare Two. A lot of my favorite movies are 85. Yeah, I'd say 85. Okay. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah, that's hard. That is really hard. Um, Raymond wants to know our thoughts on Abigail getting an R rating. Uh, I got to tell you the truth, guys. I couldn't care less about that movie. Abigail, let me see. It's that, I believe it's the, isn't it the Radio Silence's newest movie? Uh, I don't know. Pretty sure it's Radio Silence. Matt Batenelli Open. Yeah, Matt Batenelli Open and Tyler Gillette, yep. I know. I I honestly don't know. Oh, the Scream Girls in it though. Yeah, Melissa Barrera's in it. I I, it's and maybe guys, maybe I'm being, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being too cold to it. I'm not being like open. I mean, maybe that that's definitely a possibility. I'm not trying to be. I just it it just hasn't grabbed my attention. I mean, maybe it'll be good, um, but it just hasn't grabbed my attention. I I really but, don't yeah. know enough about it to give an opinion. I'm sorry. Uh, I, it's news to me. You're good, man. Apollo Balboa, what's up? Hey, guys, will what will be released first with Patrick Dempsey? Dempsey, Thanksgiving 2 or Scream 7? Sc uh, Scream. It's still going to be Scream because uh, Thanksgiving 2 is going to come out next November. They're still I wanna, aiming for Scream to be out before that. I want to applaud Eli Roth for not for not rushing um, for not rushing uh, Thanksgiving 2. It's very much a breath of fresh air. Nick kind of mentioned earlier how we live in a give me now society which can be nice but at the same time it's nice to have something to look forward to and to know that eli said hey we're gonna take a year off we're gonna write something really good we want to outdo ourselves uh i i think that's cool and other stuff can flood quick if it's got a paramount logo on it you know it's coming quick so I actually I applaud Mr. Roth for saying we're going to take a year off and we're going to write something we really like. So I just wanted yeah, to I, say that. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I, I think that it's the right decision. Uh, Camp Flashback 499 Super Chat. Thank you. Says, I love you two dudes. Huge inspirations in my life. Oh, thank you. Wow, thank you. Keep going. You guys help a lot of people every day. I lost my mind in 99 when I saw Phantom Menace. <laughs> This motherfucker has said this like three or four times and it kills me every time. I remember one time he said Phantom Menace and 99 saved my life. 
And I think <laughs> I responded back to it like I almost killed myself after seeing Phantom Menace. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Can't flashback. It, it, that was like the first Star Wars movie I, I experienced the mania for, right? Because I remember when I was a kid, Taco Bell did Star Wars toys mm-hmm. like two years before that. I was young. It was 97. But I remember that. And I had just gotten the, the VHS, the gold and black VHS box set when uh, What's-His-Face decided to change movies years later, which I, I didn't realize yep. at the time. Yep. But I did research years later, those toys from Taco Bell coming out in 97 and all that, you know, there was there was rumors that um, Lucas was kind of seeing what the temperature was for Star Wars. Mm-hmm. He was. And, uh, you know, I, it, it's hard for me to hate on. Brought back like the, the prequels, like before episode one. Yeah, because episode yeah. one was ninety nine. I'm I'm talking about the toys and stuff coming back out in ninety seven. So it's hard for me to hate. Uh, I understand all those movies have lovers, haters. I get all that. It's hard for me to hate ninety nine or episode one because of how much fun it was as a kid. Uh, all, you know that sort of thing. So it's it's very much a kids movie. Um, and b- with if you have nostalgia for it, it's a lot easier to uh, enjoy that sort of thing. But um. Yeah, I, I I I always had a great time with episode one, and Darth Maul scared the shit out of me as a kid. Are you kidding me? He's terrifying. Yeah, uh, you know? but seriously, you guys mean a lot to a lot of people. I've learned and watched to, uh, so many more things because of you two, best YouTubers in the game. God Look, bless you. God bless this you. Is, this is, I mean, this is what I mean, this this is why I, I talked to Christian before we started, before we went live, and I was just like, "Look, man, when I was going back and getting clips to make that intro, I just." It's crazy to go back and read some of your guys' <laughs> comments because it's just yeah. it's wild to me, like to to see how much it means to people and like it is the biggest reason why no matter what, I have no intentions of the pod ever going anywhere because I know there are hundreds, thousands of you guys that love this show and like H- hundreds. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Hundreds. No, is- we, we get thousands of views on every episode. I'd say thousands, but hundreds. Um, They're watching twice, maybe. But <laughs> it, it does it it means a lot to me because at no point in my life did I think that I, that would ever be a thing. You know, that that yeah. we'd be doing a show I'd be doing a show with anybody that people would, you know, wait with bated breath for the next episode. Hey, when's the next episode? When's the next episode? Um mm-hmm. you know, that's just awesome. That's awesome. It, uh, I, it means a lot to me. And uh, me, Mike, me too. I do give a shit that that 2018's halloween was a hype experience for you leading up to it i do give a shit because i i give a shit i give a shit because it was the same way for me and christian we were both what over the fucking moon oh he was just saying like i know nobody gives a shit but like the lead up to halloween 2018 was like like dude no we gave a shit you're good bro no no i I've, i'm on record saying it colored my opinion of the movie for a long time yeah we give let's a shit. do let's let's do five more questions and then we'll call it so right, five more y'all if you got something good people ask it good but yeah yeah no it, it really does mean a lot to to both of us and uh if y'all ever think i went on a rant last week after at the end of my stream with justin about like just like the tribalism in youtube and the youtube community and like i just shit like that like and and like fake friends and shit like that like because I, w- I was venting about something and people were like is this about christian i was like no <laughs> no this is not about christian and uh the, it, i want you guys to know that like there's there there's nothing there that we're we're good this show's good i was just getting some shit off my chest because you do youtube long enough and you just you see the ugly side of it the 95 percent of it's great but there's an ugly side of it for sure for sure quentin when are you guys gonna do an unsolved mysteries episode people keep asking i already did asking. one I know, but he wants another one. Oh, well, we'll see. Terribly toxic. Daniel Harris or Judy Greer? One must go. Oh, killing Judy Greer. (sighs) Even though she's a sweetheart. Yeah. I'll keep Daniel. Mark, give us your spiciest hot takes. Like, really try to make us angry. I I ain't got time to... Don't count that as a question. I love you, Mark. I don't have time to try to think about this 
I, I, I'll be here all night. I really, I, I, I love you, Mark. I'll be here all night trying to think about it. The Last Jedi rules. Halloween ends rules. Uh, <laughs> Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 is the second best Halloween movie. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, but we, uh, you've, you've said all that before. Like, no, I think exactly. he wants know, something know. new. You know, know what I mean? That's what next I'm saying. Next episode, I, Mark. Next episode. The pre-recorded episode. I'll, get, I'll give you some spicy takes yeah. for sure. Uh, Nick and Christian, are you going to get that ghost trap popcorn bucket? Oh, yeah. So he's they're referring to the Ghostbusters. The issue is, I don't know if that's an AMC thing, because that's what I read. I don't have an AMC anywhere near. I got Cinemarks near me. It's for the Ghostbusters Afterlife movie. There's going to be there's going to be sippy cups, uh, Stay Puff sippy cups. I'm cleaning the house with all this. So Ghostbusters, there's going to be a Stay Puff sippy cup. There is a, a, a ghost trap bucket a popcorn bucket i gotta get the dune one because uh i loved oh, yeah. the one I, you yeah i love dune the first movie i'm excited for the second one um i need to get the dune popcorn bucket so but yes i'm gonna get the ghost trap i i got i don't know if you guys have ever seen in the in the chat i have in my in my game room over here to my left wall i have a ghostbusters shrine and i've got all kinds of stuff from Ghostbusters. I've got old vintage toys, VHS tapes, Sega games, Stay Puff replicas, you name it. And so I'm gonna take some of that stuff and I, I it's I, I collect Ghostbusters stuff. I need hey, to get a tattoo a, of it. This is a fun question, Christian. We got Go two ahead. more. So this is one this is the second to last question. Nick and Christian, if Rob Zombie made the movie Megan, would you guys trash the film like you always do? Be honest. Uh, no, because if Rob Zombie made it, it probably wouldn't have sucked. <laughs> I mean, um, let me read that again. Nick and CHH, if Rob Zombie made the movie Megan, would you guys trash the film like you always do? Be honest. Um, I what what was my what was my issue with Megan? Um, I, my issue with Megan was probably. M- 30% of it was probably my reaction to uh, the praise it got. Usually I, I don't ever let that affect me, but this was the one time where I felt like this movie's okay, but uh, wow, four or five stars. Whoa. What's going on here? Um, it's just fine. Uh, I, I, I know. I, I don't even think I, I would say I, verbally dislike the film it's just uh fine but my reaction uh vocally came up probably more negative because i was like i I don't i don't know i'm not seeing what people are seeing now if rob zombie made the film it would be very very different there's no doubt about that it would be uh it would be uh, a lot more industrial and probably uh white trash which i am so there's a chance i could like it more um, and, and that was probably I mean. a sarcastic question, but I'm giving you a yeah. legitimate answer to it. And that's what I want to say. <laughs> you know, like, I didn't actually, I didn't actually think it sucked, guys. I was, I like, it was, it's literally. Christian and I had the same thought. Like, yeah, whatever, okay, that's like a two and a half star movie. Like, it's fine. There's nothing egregiously terrible about it. It's just something I've seen done. I've, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, I, whatever. Um, okay, so. Real quick, what was – he's asking – Nathaniel wants to know what was my inspiration for the uh, rejected Halloween scripts and um, said Planet CHH, you rock too. Um, that – I told it on the podcast, and it's a true story. I was literally just in the shower one day, and uh, I was thinking about Halloween 3D. <laughs> like, I don't know why, and I was just like, man. I think I saw a post from, like, Scout or something, just like Scout Taylor Compton on Instagram, and then I got to thinking, and then I was just like, man would have been really cool to see her as Lori again. And then I was like, damn, like I remember Halloween 3D was a thing. It was going to be a thing. And I was like, I'm going to cover that on my channel. And then when I did that and it got thousands of views in like two days, I was like, shit. Okay. People like want to see this. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do it more. And then as I was doing the Halloween series, people would say, you've got to, you've got to keep it up. You've got to do something after Halloween. And it was a no brainer for me. It was like, oh, Nightmare. Nightmare is my second favorite series. I'll do Nightmare next. So that was just kind of the inspiration. But all right, final question. Christian, Tales from the Shelf wants to know if you could spend the day with Robert England or John Carpenter, who would it be? John. Same. I feel like you just, you could learn a lot more, I think, from John. 
Robert talks too much. John, we could probably go out to eat and just sit down and just not talk at all. So uh, I don't need you to learn from he, John. He's going to be one of those like John and sitting there. He just be like, hmm. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. me and John, I can tell me and John probably run on the same wavelength. Robert's very high energy and talks and talks. Uh, I love Robert. I'd like to meet him in a brief period. I'd much rather hang out with John because I, I, me and John could probably eat pizza and watch a movie and not say a word. And I could be like, man, that was awesome when he leaves. Yeah. So I'd much rather spend it with John. Yeah. Same here. Same here. But all right, guys, we were going to do. So I think I, th I actually think Nick would get along better with Robert because they can talk. Yeah. Me yeah, and John but, would just sit there and just fucking. But I'd want to learn more from John. I just feel like I'd learn more from John. I got, I don't know. I just feel like picking his brain, even if he didn't talk a lot. You see, this like the John thing. You, you, you try to pick his brain. It's the thing. You try to pick his brain. Like, John, what were you thinking? I wasn't thinking. We had to make the movie. I had to write the script. I had a six-pack yeah, okay. of Budweiser. Yes, sir. Like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, John, when you're writing the score for Halloween, like when you're trying to make the mood, I just write in minor key. I just start with a key. Bong. What next, kid? Like, I feel... Because <laughs> there's I got, interviews. Uh, there, guys, you, I don't remember the name of the video. There was a, it's my favorite John Carpenter interview of all fucking time. John's in the interview. He's wearing his jeans up a little. You get, they kind of ride up high on his ankles. You see his dad tube socks with his sketchers. <laughs> he's got his shirt on. He's got, it's a little stained on the side. He's sitting in the chair. The interviewer is this British guy. He's got the pen between his fingers with a notebook in one hand and a turtleneck. And he's trying to be philosophical with John. And John, at a point, gets annoyed. He's like, I don't think like you. I don't have these philosophical thoughts. How did I start writing songs when I had to do a record for whatever? I go with the keyboard. Bong. That's the first key. I add keys after that. I create some. I can't. It's my favorite interview of all time. This guy is trying to get. He's trying to interview Wes Craven. <laughs> you know, like he's trying to interview John and be like, tell me what, what was going through your mind? Like what, what inspired John and his answers are just so fucking black and white. John is my favorite director in the world because there's something so refreshing about not being so philosophical and not he's, being yeah, so not being pretentious. He's, he's just not. It's yeah, and it's it's not even that because I wouldn't call Craven pretentious because he's a very kind, humble guy, you know. But like, he's very obviously Craven. He's people describe him. Oh, he's the highfalutin psychological horror guy. He likes getting out of your mind, which is kind of funny too because how many films really do that? Not really that many from him. I think it's just his personality and the way he talks. That's why people say that. But this is why when you ask the question, who would I rather hang out with? It'd be fucking John, man. I just want to chill and hang out with John. And, you know, I'd probably ask him about Halloween or this or that or whatever, a bunch of movies. But I know that he's not going to bullshit anything. Yeah. And I, I, I just love John. I hope he sticks around with us for a long time. Jeez. I know he's getting older, but. He's just uh, such a, yeah, he's a straight shooter, man. He's just such a straight shooter. He's not going to tell you what you want to hear, like, at all. It's it's literally, and he's going to be honest. Like, I, I, like you were saying, he's very simplistic when it comes to his answer sometimes. Like, he, when he describes talking about making the theme for Halloween, he literally was just like, I don't know. I just remember, like, five, four time, you know, and I was just, he says the same story every time, yeah. too. My dad gave me a set of bongos, mm -hmm. and uh, he taught me five, four times. Five, four time. yep. <laughs> I mean, he says it, he doesn't even change the, the story. He doesn't even change the story a shred. You literally can verbatim say it with him. That's the funniest thing. And I agree with Andrew Skywalker. Nick should make a Halloween movie. I think he did. Uh, he had this, he had this <laughs> Michael kind of a puffy guy and he, he gives the he gives the guy an xl jumpsuit an extra small jumpsuit i mean so the thing's rotting up his fucking ass uh he's got a shitty dollar store michael myers mask on hey uh, it's I great i left a good one at home it's great that was the that was the peak of nick's channel i mean that's when his channel was literally on fire that was yeah. my favorite era yeah i would i would upload a video like once a year uh He's wearing he's wearing pajama pants and a sweatshirt, and he's directing this movie. 
Uh, it's great. I, I love always it. wanted to be a director, Christian. I really did. Oh, I love it. Those were my favorite videos. I really did. I still stand by the side it. of this little fucking gully on the side of the road, and and I'm directing him through the trees in the woods. It's like fuck, here's I love it. Here's, you guys can go find those videos. They're all my channel. It was called Sam Hain Evil Never Dies. That I love it. My favorite era. My favorite yeah. era. Yeah, I um, <laughs> it was it was something. Uh, and I had a good mask. Okay, he was using the shitty mask on that one day, but it was from far away shots, so you couldn't really tell. <laughs> The good just mask. like yeah, this is just like the fucking real Holly movies. Uh, there's a purple, there's a pink mask in one scene. Oh fuck it. <laughs> yeah, what, this is what we oh, have to work with. Fuck it. That's what it was. My inspiration was Halloween four, man. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I would have fit right in. But yay, yeah, you look guys, we've gone an hour and a half. Uh, yeah, we got it. We got to wrap it. Thank you all for being here tonight. <laughs> Seriously, uh, we we really enjoyed this. This is a fun when we get to catch up with you guys, answer questions, talk about previous episodes. Absolutely. We'll have an episode out first week of March. Uh, we always, that's we'll, first week of the month is what we've been doing. So I don't know what day, but first week of March, we'll have an episode out. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what it's going to be about yet, but uh, we'll see you guys there. Uh, if you haven't yeah. left a like on this, leave a like on the stream. If you're watching this on the playback, sorry you missed us. Leave a like on the video. Uh, Christian, any parting words before we get out of here? Uh, no, just thank you guys. Um Thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight. I really appreciate it. If you're watching on the playback, playback, I appreciate it very much. Uh, thank you guys for watching for all these years, and um, you know we'll see you. We'll see you in in March. Yeah, we'll see you guys in March. Looking forward to it. All right, Cr. That's right. I got snubbed for best director, just like Rooney Mara got snubbed for the Oscar for an Iron right. Elm Street 